What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create. And today guys, we are going to be setting up an elevator. And the reason we're doing that is because in the coming episodes, we're gonna be setting up some automated mining systems, ones that you guys have wanted to see for quite some time now. So I'm super excited for those, but we're gonna be setting them up at Y level 11. And so today I thought it would be a great opportunity to show off one of the cooler quality of life machines that create offers, which is the rope pulley. And that's gonna allow us to make an elevator that will bring us from where we are right now at Y level 62, right outside our base, down to Y level 11, where all those setups will be for the automated mining in a very stylish way. Now it's really cheap. It does not require much to set up and we're gonna be making it right in here where we worked last episode setting up the windmill. You might recall that it did not look like this at the end of last episode. There was no large hole that I could fall down to my death right here. And I promise you guys, I will do my best to not actually fall down there. I'm gonna say it right now. If at some point in the video I do fall and die, I'm not gonna clip it out. I'll just let you guys post in the comments how shameful it is that I did that. But I dug this all the way down to, it's actually at Y level 10, but the elevator is gonna be stopping at Y level 11. And so today we're gonna to be setting that up and automating it and all that fun stuff. Now I'm super excited for this because I think it looks absolutely awesome and I think it's gonna be a very cool sort of interactive part of the base. And thankfully it's really not that expensive or difficult to set up. And that's really my bread and butter because I love the simple stuff that also looks cool. So the two machines that we're gonna be working with today that are really critical for this are the rope pulley and the powered toggle latch. And the powered toggle latch is a redstone block that's similar to what you guys might have worked with before if you're very familiar with vanilla redstone. And it's basically a single block version of the T flip-flop. So when we input redstone to it, it's going to hold that even if the initial redstone signal goes away, which makes it perfect for this because we're gonna be pushing buttons and that's what's going to allow us to bring the elevator to whatever area we want, no matter where we are and no matter where the elevator is. And that's very important because if you were using things like levers, it wouldn't necessarily work. So we're gonna be going over that today uh, since we've never used that before. And you may notice that in here in this chest, there's a lot of other stuff that's already been crafted. Most of it is just gonna be working with transporting the rotational power from the windmill to the rope pulley. So you don't necessarily need the same blocks in the same quantity, but you're probably gonna have some similar ones because you do need to supply this with rotational power. Now we've got in here for me, a rotation speed controller and a large cog wheel because the windmill unfortunately is very slow. And so we're gonna be speeding it up because I don't wanna be sitting on an elevator for 50 minutes while we make it down. I do not have enough to talk about for 50 minutes with you guys, unfortunately. My life is not really that interesting. I just play a bunch of video games and go to work. So if we're recording a video and we're taking the elevator and it's that slow, then unfortunately I think we're out of luck because I'm gonna have to cut that clip because I'm gonna be rambling about my cats or the weather or something like that. Along with that, we have really the most important thing other than the machines, which are the linear chassis, and these are going to be the base for the elevator. So whatever size that is going to be, the part you're standing on, that is how many linear chassis you're gonna need. And I have an additional one here, since the area was, we're using is gonna be a two by three. I have seven here because the area the rope pulley is gonna attach to, I'm gonna use as an additional linear chassis so that we have a nice platform to stand on and you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about later, but uh, you don't necessarily need an additional one, but I'm gonna be using it for the setup today. We've also got some gearboxes and encased shafts, again, for the rotational power transportation. We've got a gear shift, which is extremely important for this because that's what's going to be combined with the redstone for the setup to allow us to actually bring the elevator up and down because it'll allow us to reverse the rotation based on redstone input. And then we've got the crafting pieces for the two things we're crafting today, being the rope pulley and toggle latch. And then we've got some buttons, some redstone links, which are very critical. We're going to need three of them, two to attach to the buttons and one to attach to the actual setups rope pulley. And then we've got a lever again for crafting. And we can't forget the slime ball, which we are going to need for making the linear chassis sticky. Only one of them needs to be sticky, but it does need to, so you need to make sure you have at least one slime ball on hand. So we can grab all this stuff out and do the crafting, which like I said, is very cheap. And that's definitely very nice because if you are really into building, this is not gonna be gated behind late game stuff that you need to make. It's very cheap, so you can do it really early on. I don't necessarily know why you would do this super early, 
since it doesn't really bring anything to the table other than looks, but uh, it is an option for you. So we're gonna need one andesite casing, two shafts, some wool of any color, and an iron sheet to make the rope pulley. And then for the powered toggle latch, it is even cheaper than that. It's going to be three stone, a lever, and a redstone torch. And honestly, I love stuff like this that modded Minecraft offers. I played with redstone way back in the days uh, of, you know, super early on vanilla Minecraft. I mean, I've been playing vanilla Minecraft since I was in like seventh grade. Um, and you guys know I'm now graduated from college. So uh, I played with redstone way back when and having to learn how to set up all those different switches and whatnot that would take up, you know, three by three areas to make. Um, that was never fun. All the different gates that you had to learn how to set up. And while it was cool, I definitely think it's awesome now that a lot of mods offer single block versions of those or very similar versions for you to work with. So uh, just a side note that I want to comment on because I'm very uh, appreciative to a lot of the mod makers for doing that. Young me thought it was cool knowing how to set up redstone. Slightly older me finds it a little bit tedious, especially in videos. So they're going to be setting this up in a way that is a little bit unique because we obviously have a large elevator shaft right here that we're going to be going down. And so we're going to set up the rope pulley and some of the redstone up here. Then we are going to go down and set up the rest down there. And then we're going to have the rope pulley drop down and attach to the chassis down there and then bring us back up. So for now, we're just going to fill some of this in with dirt. Uh, so again, I don't fall down, but we're going to be going up and bringing down the rotational power through this corner right here. And then right here is where we are going to be putting the gear shift and the rope pulley. And so that is why we're going to have the seven linear chassis because we've got the two by three right here for six. And then this block right here is gonna be the linear chassis that is going to have the rope pulley attached to it so that it's kind of out of the way a little bit. So we will go up with some blocks of dirt and then let me get the rest of the stuff that we're actually gonna use here on our bar so that it's easier to work with when we're up there. Okay, so we'll go up over here to kind of stay out of the way. And I told you guys, the first thing that we are going to do is increase the speed at which this is rotating. And so the way we're gonna do that is using the rotation speed controller. And we're just gonna throw that down right here. I'm fine with leaving it at 16. It doesn't need to be super fast, but we can always adjust it later. We'll just test it out here to see. And then we're gonna be throwing down uh, a large cog wheel, obviously, so we can pull the increased speed out of here. And so we've got it pushing over here and we want it to go into this corner. So I'm gonna actually, you know what? We can break this one. Great, so okay, so it's one that we can't even see from outside, that's awesome. And then we're gonna break this over here and start going down. Now we are going to be able to see these from the outside and that's why we're gonna be using the encased shafts. And so I'm actually gonna break this right here too. And I'm gonna go all the way down uh, to where we wanna be and then I'm gonna bring it back up with the encased shafts so that we can finish it. And I think, yep, so it should be right here. So we're gonna wanna put down a gearbox right here. And I believe we're gonna need to have one of the ones that's, yep, gonna go like this. So we'll do that. And then we are going to have a bunch of encased shafts coming right up here, like that. And then we'll have another gearbox up here, which again is going to have to be, we're gonna have to have one like this, which is gonna go right here. And then we're gonna have to have another one Oops, that's an encased shaft. We're gonna have to have another gearbox right here like that. Now, the one thing I wanna actually do is take one of the shafts and connect it right here. And the reason I'm doing this is because, ooh, there's a little bit of a, of a texture mismatch right there. Um, but yeah, so the reason I'm doing this is because I honestly like the idea of looking up in here when the elevator is running and seeing the cog wheel and actually seeing the shaft rotating. I don't really like that idea from the outside. I still want this little tower that we're going to be working in right now um, to look like it's been built up using actual blocks. And so the encased shafts allow us to do that. But up here, I like the idea that the internal mechanisms going on here are visible. So we now have the rotational power brought down. Uh, I'm going to keep it at 16. Honestly, it's a little bit more realistic and I believe we are good to go down from here now and we can start working 
on setting up the gear shift and the redstone and the rope pulley. So we can put down the rope pulley right over here and we're going to want to rotate this. Oh, you know, we can actually just rotate it like that. So it actually looks pretty cool. This will spin when it's going down. And at the bottom there, you can see that there's a little gray square that's actually going to sort of be the latch that's going to go down and attach onto the linear chassis and then stay there and pull it back up. And then, of course, we're going to have the gear shift going down in between here. And you can see that it's rotating now, like I just said. But the important thing is that we need to make the redstone work for the gear shift. And so we're going to come back over here. And I'll eventually probably cover this up with leaves, but it should be that block right there. And so to set this up, we need to put down the power toggle latch facing into this. And then we are going to have to put down the wireless redstone link right here. And so for this, we're going to set up whatever frequency we want for it. And this is going to be the receiver. So we need to shift right click on it so that it gets the little disc around it right here. And then we'll set this up to be, hmm, what do we want to make this? Uh, we can do it as, we'll do it as dirt and cobblestone. Yeah, so there's already one set as dirt. Um, so you can see that because there was an input to it, even though we took it away, because this works like a T flip flop, just like a button push would, uh, it is now fully powered. So it'll stay that way. So we can manually turn it off using the lever, but because that happened, that was a perfect example of how it's actually gonna work. Now, the reason I have leaves here is because honestly, I just wanna cover that up. So it looks a little bit funky over here now. Um, so I'm gonna try and figure out a way to make it look a little bit more natural, honestly. It's not totally great with outlooks, but I'll take it. We're trying to cover something up. So now we have it that if we are to set up anything on the frequency dirt cobblestone, and I believe, you know what, I'm forgetting right now, which order was it in? That's important for us to know. So dirt is one, cobblestone is two, okay. Um, so we gotta remember that, because if not, I'm gonna be stuck down there. But now what we wanna do is set up the button that we're gonna be pushing to make the elevator go down. And we can set that up right, can we set it up right here? No, we're gonna wanna set it up we're going to want to set it up somewhere that we're able to push the button and not actually see where the redstone is. So is that possibility right there? Um, let's go in here and see what's going on over here. So unfortunately, no, it's not an option there. See, this is the really, really awkward part is we need to be able to push the button and right behind that, we need to have the redstone. So, I honestly, I feel like right here is the best option, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. I wanted to have it right here, but that's not going to work. So we'll just do it right here and we'll put something over this inside. Honestly, we'll just put some cobblestone here or something. Uh, we'll just, we'll do something like that. I don't really know. You know, it's not, not ideal, but we'll do it for, for the time being. Um, I'll make this doorway extra chunky, I guess. So we'll work with that. Uh, I'll fix that off camera. That's horrible. Um, you know, we got the mechanism series where I think my building is kind of on point. And then we've got this series where, yeah, it's not as much. Um, so we'll put down the redstone link. And like I said, we're going to do the dirt and cobblestone here. So we'll do frequency one. If I can click it down in there, is it going to let me, is it cause I'm shift clicking? We'll break this and we'll just walk right in. Okay, so we'll put down the dirt and the cobblestone, and then we can cover this up, and then we're going to put down the oak button right here. So if we were to push this, you can see that now it changes the way it's rotating. You can see this lights up, and this immediately started going the other way. If I push it again, it flips again. So this is the important part here, is that when I'm up here, I can make it go down, I can make it well, if I wait for a second, I can make it go up. So wherever the elevator is, if it's up here, I can make it go down. If it's down there and I need it up here because I died or something and I'm respawned back up here and I need to get down there, I can bring it back up. 
And that is the really critical part of using that. I cannot stress that enough is you could do other setups where a certain on off, you know, made it always up or always down. Very similar to how we have the setups for some of the automated machines like our farm out here, um, where it's, you know, extending on one signal and going in on another. Um, we want to be able to do that wherever it is. So now we have all the redstone set up. The last thing for us to do is to mine these blocks right here and get ourselves down. So I'm gonna do this in kind of a weird way. So we're gonna clear all this out right here. And now we're just going to mine down like this. Now, an important thing that I'm gonna have to do later is come and replace these dirt blocks right here because this is going to be visible uh, while we're going down on the elevator. So I do want it to look nice. I did make the shaft we're going down look nice and it's all lit up and fancy and stuff. But we're mining these right here because this is where the last linear chassis is going to go. And this is where the rope pulley ropes are going to go. And so we got to clear it out. And then once we get down there, we'll set up the last bit of redstone and the linear chassis. And then when we push it, it will send the rope pulley rope down to us. And once it's down there, it'll latch on permanently to the linear chassis. And then it'll be able to take us back up. Okay, so we want to come down here. Now I just dug out this little area. So our button is going to go right here pretty much to match what we have up top. And so we'll put down the redstone link and we'll just get back in here so I can put down. So we'll do the cobblestone and if I can click it, the dirt. So there we go. And then the button is going to be right here. We'll fill that in. And now we can set up the linear chassis. So we'll put down the ones right here. Now you want these to be facing up like this. And then right here, you want this one, the one that is going to have the rope pulley attached to it. You want it facing horizontally like this. And then you are going to make the face of it sticky using the slime ball. And then you are going to put down the last linear chassis. Now the next important thing is we are gonna come over using the wrench and we are going to adjust this to be three for the range. So we're doing that because it is going to grab these three. We have other stuff around it that we do not want it to move with it. So we can do that. And honestly, I think we should be good to go now. So we can reorganize a little bit. And if we were to push this button, it should start coming down and we can see it right there, lowering very slowly down to us. It's not actually that slow. Well, yeah, it actually kind of is. Uh, so maybe we'll increase the speed a bit. We've got a lot of uh, capability to up the speed because it's a windmill and all it's powering is the elevator, which really does not uh, require that much stress uh, units on it. So we'll be able to up the speed more if we want. I just want to see how the actual elevator looks while it's going up. Obviously, we're traversing about 51 or 52 blocks here. So it actually is a fair bit of... Uh, of space we got to cover. I know a lot of the elevators I see other people set up do not tend to go this deep uh, from that level. So the speed isn't as critical, um, but yeah, it's coming down. I honestly, I love how it looks being able to see it actually spinning and lowering. I think they did a phenomenal job with this, uh, which is really why I was so excited to set it up because I do, no matter what I said, you know, a couple of minutes ago, I do like how the base looks and I feel like this adds a really cool interactive part to it. Uh, being able to push the buttons and have it work like an actual elevator. I say that in quotes, it's the most realistic elevator you're going to get in Minecraft without at least very extensive redstone work. Um, so I'm happy to have that. Um, but yeah, so we'll see that once this comes down, it's going to, well, oh, had a little visual glitch there. It's going to attach to this linear chassis and now it's, it's bound to it. So it's always going to stay attached. And the last thing that we need to do is push this button and take a nice joy ride back up. So you can see now that all of these are being brought up with us. I think it looks absolutely awesome going up on this. Uh, it is a little bit slower than I would like. Um, I figured 16 would be a little bit faster. So maybe we'll put it up to 24 or something. Uh, I have to see, but this will be a great way for us to quickly get up and down. That's a little bit nicer than using ladders. I know that they might be a little bit faster in the grand scheme of things or jumping down into water and then coming back up. But as you guys know, we're all about modded Minecraft here. And while that usually means being more efficient, sometimes it means making things overly complicated because they look really, really cool. 
So the last thing we got to make sure is that it stops at the appropriate area up here and we're able to hop off. And after that, that'll pretty much be it for the episode. Not really a super complicated one, guys, but it is going to prep us for setting up some of the super complicated stuff you guys have been excited for in the coming episodes. Also, I think this is super cool to add to your base if you're playing with Create. I think it's kind of a staple thing to add. So if you are playing with Create, I would highly advise you to add this in and then let me know what you use it for because I definitely like hearing the stories about all these cool quality of life things that you guys can add in. So you can see we've reached the top. We got a nice little bump and there we are. So everything's back in place. If we were to hit this button, we would go back down, but I think one trip is enough for the camera. So we're gonna call it there, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you think this is cool like I do. Honestly, I know it's nothing, like a lot of the modded Minecraft stuff we set up, it's not giving us infinite resources, it's not generating power, but I think it's very aesthetically pleasing, and I think it's very useful for what it's meant to do. But, yep, hopefully you guys are having a great day, and I will talk to you later. Standing in a glass bowl, at the end of a black hole, cold and upside down. Faces swirling past me, all my memories rolling past me.